In the last video, we made a three input Carnot map from a truth table. So this time, let's make a three input Carnot map with, um, from a midterm function representation. And this one's gonna have a wraparound grouping so I can show you. So let me just refresh your memory. Um, the location for each one of these cells, so this is going to be midterm zero, midterm one, midterm two, midterm three, and then midterm four, midterm five, midterm six, and midterm seven. So that means if we're given a function in midterm expanded form, or sum of midterms, then we can easily just put it in the correct cell in our Carnot map. So let me show you an example. Suppose we want to simplify a function in midterm notation. Um, the sum of min terms 0, 2, 4, 6, 7, let's say. Okay, great. So we're going to make our three input Carnot map. I put A on the left side and I put B and C up on the right. And now my input, possible inputs for A are 0, 1. Possible inputs for B and C, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Make sure to do that in gray code so there's only one bit change per um, transition from the current number to the next. And then um, midterm zero, I know, is going to have a one because of this midterm um, notation here. So everywhere I have this numeral, that means that in my function at midterm zero, midterm two, or midterm four, etc., I know that my function is going to have an output of one. So I get to put a one wherever one of these numbers is. So that's midterm zero. Um, min term 1 is not in the list, so that gets a 0. Min term 2 is in the list, so it gets a 1. Min term 3 is not in the list, so it gets a 0. Down here, um, min term 4 is in the list, so it gets a 1. Min term 5 is not in the list, so it gets a 0. Min term 6 is here, it gets a 1, and min term 7 gets a 1. So here is my Carnot map made from the um, min term notation. So now I want to do my groupings. Um, here I wanted to show you the wraparound grouping. So as you can see, I've got two bits together here, and I've got two bits together here. So I could group these separately into two groups of two, but the more bits I can group together, the better my simplification is going to be. So if you see that a group of four exists, um, do the group of four over the groups of two. Um, and so we're going to do this wraparound grouping. So this is going to group here wrapped around with what's on the right side. So this is actually going to be one group. And the reason why we can do that is because of the gray code. Because so if you look at these two columns, what is um, similar about B and C in these two columns? Well, we have B is 0 and B is 1, so that's different. But we have C is 0 and C is 0. So that means the similarities between these two columns is that C is 0 in both of these cases. So then the other group that I have is I have this 1 here. Um, now, even though this 1 here is grouped in the blue group, I'm going to also borrow it to make this pink group. And the reason why is because we always want to do a grouping if we can. Sometimes there will be a, a random one that's off by itself in no man's land that, that's just impossible to group it with anything. And in that case, um, we're not going to be able to reduce any literals. So if we have this grouping, we get to do um, a reduction. All right, so let's look at what these groups, the conditions of these groups actually are. So our blue group. For our blue group, um, what makes this blue group true? Well, we have that A can be either 0 or 1, and we'll have a 1 in our blue group. So this is going to be either. Um, we have B is 0 or 1, so this is actually also either. Um, and then for C, like we mentioned before, C is 0 in this column and 0 in this column. So that means that um, C is equal to 1, is basically the only condition that matters. And A and B can be anything, and we'll always have a 1 as long as C is equal to 0. So in our sum of products form, this is denoted as the literal C naught. OK, great. So let's go on to do the next group. The pink group is, let's look at this row right here. So what's the value of A for these 1 bits? Well, A has to be 1. 
And then what's the value of B? B is 1 and B is 1 in this column. So that means B must be 1, but C can be either 0 or 1 and we'll have a 1 in this grouping. So my C here is either. So that means it doesn't need to be in my literals group because it doesn't matter. It can be either 0 or 1. But the thing that does matter is A has to be 1 and B has to be 1. So then I take these literals here and my function f is going to be um, the sum of these, so basically or these together. So my function is c naught or a b. And um, I could write out this whole midterm expansion, use Boolean algebra to simplify, or this is a massive shortcut to put it in this Carnot map and just get the most simple um, expression that we can for f without having to do any kind of minimization or um, apply Boolean algebra. So um, in the next video, I'm going to show you an example of how to make a truth table with um, from the max term representation instead of the min term, and also what we do if we have a bit that we can't group with any of the other ones.